Okay, so time for a rant video. It's been a while since I ranted. So let's rant about stuff that drives me nuts that people do. Now, unlike other Hemi tuners who bitch, cry, whine, and moan that they have too much business and that people expect too much of them, blah, blah, blah. This would be a little bit different, okay? Um, one of the things that I hate the most is the fact that everyone blames the tuner every time something happens. Doesn't matter what happens. Literally, a tire could fall off. Oh, it must have been the tuner. And it is it is mind-numbing. This guy sent me, and, and he's not blaming me, but this guy sends me a picture of a motor with four pistons just blown out the bottom of them, okay? He's only running 19 degrees of timing at wide open throttle and 93 octane. Super, super safe. And he's like, yeah, everyone locally keeps telling me it's the tune. I said, yeah, of course they do. It's the first thing everybody wants to blame. Nobody wants to blame the driver. Nobody wants to blame the gas station, the fuel, or anything else, or racing, or beating on the cars. They want to blame the tuner. Oh, you ran too much timing. 19 degrees at wide open throttle in a Hemi is not too much timing, especially at 93 octane fuel. Um, there's Diablo tunes that are can tunes that run more timing than that. Um, or I get, I get a lot of weird shit like, hey, uh, after you tune my engine, my transmission isn't shifting right. But we didn't tune the transmission. No idea. I, I'm, I'm lost for words on, on stuff like that. It is mind-blowing. Or you get customers who are like, yeah, you know, they put a cam in, they have you tune the cam, and then they're like, you know, I feel like it should have more power at this RPM. What? <laughs> how would you have any idea how much power it should be making at a specific RPM when you put a cam in it and had it tuned? It's not stock, and you haven't driven one with an identical cam in it. Now, don't get me wrong, I feel like there should be more power everywhere, but it, it just, it, it makes me laugh when people say, stupid shit like that or I have no problem with people tuning cars themselves that is why I have a channel that teaches people how to tune because I want people to learn I want people to want to learn you know the thing is is people get to a certain point they're like ah oh, you know I just I just can't get it they hit me up they send me some money I fix it for them show them what they did wrong they're happy and they keep going on with learning no problem with that now, the one thing that sparked this video for me today, I have a guy message me. He said, bro, I need to talk to you. He says, my tune's set up for 11.2 at wide open throttle, and it should be 12.5 at wide open throttle. Uh, so there's power being left on the board. So, oh, okay. I said, how'd you measure your air fuel ratio? What did you use? He said, oh, I just sent the file to someone. Okay, so what? Anybody that tunes, and this, this information is for people that don't know how to tune. Cars have a computer that set the air fuel ratio, but it doesn't always actually match the actual air fuel ratio the engine is seeing. You can set your air fuel ratio at 11 to 1 and put a wide band on the car, and you might only be running 13 to 1. You cannot base the air fuel ratio off of what is written in the tune. It will never, ever match what's in the tune. My issue here is that he sent my file to someone else to look over, and then the person tried saying that I didn't know what I was doing based on that fact alone. Now here, let me be very particular with this. A car at wide open throttle, naturally aspirated, typically makes the most power from 12.5 to 12.8 to 1. That is a common base measurement. But what most people don't know, and this is how you can tell people that don't, people that have no idea what they're doing when they're tuning, trucks require more fuel. Trucks make more power with more fuel because of the weight. There's too much weight to move around. The, it get, the combustion gets hot, it knocks. 
you need more fuel for heavier vehicles at the exact same RPM and speed as you would with the exact same engine and mods in a car. That is also, a, should be a common known fact between tuners. So on a car that likes 12.5 to 1, you might yank that motor out and put it in a truck that weighs 2,000 pounds more, and it might need 11.8 to 1. So, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Step one, if you have a quality tuner, do not send your files to other people to check over. If you don't think your tuner is quality, feel free to send the files to someone else who you think is better. But keep in mind, just because someone says they've been doing it a long time or someone says they're the best, doesn't mean either of them are true. This exact person says that he's been tuning LS engine since 2002. But yet he thinks that a car and truck make the same power at wide open throttle at the same fuel and also seems to think that the equivalence ratio in HP tuners is the exact air fuel ratio the vehicle is getting. So those of you who do tune will get kind of a kick out of this video. Those of you who don't tune, you might be able to get some new information out of this video to kind of um, help out your knowledge set a little bit more. Um, so I guess I really can't think of anything else to rant about. I guess that was the rant. The rant is customers should put trust in the person tuning their vehicle. I know if the person sucks, that trust could be bad. It could hurt them. I get that. But customers should put trust in their tuner. And customers should try to do as much research as possible. But And this is the hard part. Don't always believe everything everyone tells you or everything that you find on the internet. Which, again, I know it. this is making everybody run in circles here because you'll never know what to believe. And that is the hard part. But... Everything that I've said here, any quality high-end tuner will tell you everything exactly like I just said. Um, there's a reason why we're tuning cars all over the world, all over the country. Um, it, it just, it's everywhere. United Arab Emirates, Australia, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, India, England, just Russia, Norway, Sweden, I have cars all over the world that we are tuning and we will do 100% our best to make sure that these vehicles get the best tuning possible and safe. Now, if a customer wants their vehicle to make 100% power, as much power as we can squeeze out of it, we'll do it. But we're going to tell you that we're doing it and we are not to be held liable or responsible or talk shit about when you blow your stuff up. That is why we tune reliably. We make for reliable tunes so that way we don't have to worry about people blowing their engines up and then coming back and saying that it's our fault that they were abusing their vehicle and blew their motor up. What I tell every Silverado, because we tune a lot of Silverados, I tell every Silverado owner that comes in my shop, plain and simple, I am going to give you as much power physically possible without making your vehicle any less reliable. But... And I end it with this. I said, I am not making your vehicle any less reliable. But what I am doing is I'm making it easier for you to damage your vehicle if you do not treat it properly. Meaning, shitty fuel. Constantly beating the piss out of it. You should not, on a street vehicle, your pedal should spend should not spend more time on the floor or over 50% than it does cruising around. Your engine cannot take that kind of abuse. It is not a drag car. It is not built for drag racing. You cannot flat foot it everywhere you go and expect your engine to stay together. It is built for OEM quality specs. It is built to be daily driven and maybe tow once in a while. It is not built to be a Le Mans or NASCAR engine. So please keep that in mind when you get your vehicle tuned or when you modify your vehicle is that you need to drive it based on what you're building it for. Unless it is built like a drag car, you cannot drive it like a drag car. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It just won't last as long. So, um, I guess that's the full rant. I'm just going to let this go out until it hits exactly 10 minutes. Because apparently, 
YouTube needs my videos to be 10 minutes long in order for them to get the correct amount of views. And now it's at 10 minutes.